Hey everybody, my name is Matthew Sambanis, and thank you for joining me for today's video. I'm a certified public accountant. My firm is based in Long Island, New York. And today we are gonna discuss the massive credit card debt bubble, um, what I believe will happen in the future, how to profit from it, and what it means for the economy. So, as we know, the national debt clock is 32.7 trillion. And looking back at the last 72 days, we added over $700 billion to that, which annualized means uh, that would account to or amount to $3.5 trillion. Huge numbers here. And that's just the national debt. That doesn't include student loan debt. That doesn't include credit card debt, auto loan debt, student loan debts, et cetera, home equity lines of credits, mortgages, et cetera. That's just the national debt clock. But this video is about the credit card debt. So let's go through it. Um, the total amount just exceeded $1 trillion. And to put that in proper perspective, um, in the last quarter, it increased $45 billion. And what does that mean? It's up from 4.6% in the prior quarter. The problem with the 4.6% increase in one quarter is round that up. What do we have? 5% times four quarters, 20%. So the credit card debt is grown annualized at 20%. That's a huge number. That means we're at 1 trillion. You know, in a year from now, we're looking at 1.2 trillion. Add that on. Then we're at, you know, 1.45 trillion. The numbers get worse and worse and worse. What's contributing to this? Well, if you're an everyday American like I am, um, or just happen to be living here in America, um, people are barely scraping by, um, good jobs aren't available, rents through the roof, rents keep on going up, mortgages are absolutely astrom astronomical, assuming you even have one. Um, insurance keeps on going up, whether it's your home or your auto insurance or your health insurance. Um, you know, student loans are about to start to have to be repaid starting in the next month. Um, and all the free money from the pandemic that was here is now gone. So people are relying more and more on their credit cards. Um, some historical numbers. In 2000, the credit card debt level was 470 billion. In 2010, it was 750 billion. In 2020, it was 850 billion. And now we're back at one point, not back at, I apologize, we're at 1.03 trillion in credit card debt. Huge number. And that ties into what? It ties into default rates. So in proper perspective or long-term horizons, um, in 2000, the credit card default rate was 5.7%. In 2010, it was 11%. Uh, the reason for that is that's when we had the uh, Great Recession, as they want to call it, and everybody was defaulting on their credit cards left and right. In 2020, it was only 4%. Um, and even looking at 2015, it was only 4%. In 2023, on over a trillion dollars, we're at 7.5% on you know that's 75 billion dollars that people aren't paying in um and to what also factors in is that's as of quarter three 2023 in quarter two of 2022 so a year ago we were at six percent so we're up over 1.5 percent and you know default rates i believe are gonna continue to go up people are more and more reliant on their credit cards everything is absolutely astronomically expensive i went to a mexican place the other day and their deal was uh, three tacos for 15 dollars. that's psychotic um, i went to the supermarket a can of cinnamon buns were ten dollars for four cinnamon buns that you make on your own by the way that you put in the oven ten flipping dollars I think I saw a coffee by the pound for $15. I mean, this is not sustainable. And if you're just making, you know, minimum wage or whatever, I don't know how you're paying for your, I don't know how you're paying for your way, even, you know, credit cards or not. And the problem with credit card debt, it's a vicious cycle. So we'll also dive into that. Um, another issue that we have with the credit card debt is the average rate is now 23%, which is 
huge astronomical and a historical high. And what does that mean? That means that some people have their credit card debt at 0% and other people have their credit card rates at 30% or, or 40%, I guess, to, to get to 23% as an average um, on over a trillion dollars. That's just mind blowing to me. And um, that's, you know, the highest record going back to 1985. Um, so people are hurting, unfortunately. Uh, another issue that we have is a whopping 47% of cardholders are now carrying balances from month to month. So people used to pay off their credit cards in full, done. Uh, now they don't. And that is up. Um, in a two-year period from 39%. So in December of 2021, people who carried their credit card balances, and don't forget, that's when people were still dealing with COVID, 39%. And now we're up 8%. It's just going to keep on getting worse. You know, you're talking 4% per year. Huge numbers. Um, other issues that people are having is, according to bankrate.com, um, the analyst there, Greg McBride, said people aren't financing purchases at 20% because everything is going swimmingly. They're doing so because they're under financial strain. Meaning these aren't frivolous purchases. People are using their credit cards for life necessities. Think about it. If you had $100 in the bank, would you go spend $100 on your credit card and pay it off over the long term when now instead of it costing you $100, if you pay the bare minimum, it's going to cost you $200 or $250 for life's basic necessities. This is unsustainable and just not right. And there's no words for it. Um, you know, another recent survey discovered that many Americans who build up credit card debt eventually get out of it by consolidating their loans. But then within a year to two years, they're back in and they actually have more credit card debt than they previously had. So very sad story that plays over and over. Um, as a matter of fact, a study conduct, conducted by TransUnion found that borrowers who used a personal loan to consolidate their credit card debt saw their balances decrease by 57% on average. But within 18 months, those averages or those balances were past that original average that decreased. So whatever, they had $1,000 in credit card debt, probably more like ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. They consolidated it, knocked it down. And within you know, a year to two, they owe more. Um, and part of that is people not learning financial education, which is another video for another day and a topic I will delve into a little bit on this video. So bear with me. I'm trying to get through the meats and potatoes of this. Um, another issue is, according to the Federal Reserve, according to the government, according to CNBC, the economy is standing good. If the economy is so good, why are people relying on their credit cards? Why has their credit cards increased by over $250 billion in the last two years? The economy is not that good, people. Um, and it's not a sustainable economy. Yes, sales are going up, product sales are going up, but that's probably because everything is so much more expensive. Um, going to another survey, you know, um, Quicken said, you know, that the increased reliance on credit cards is likely to lead many into severe debt, which especially in trouble some with interest rates as high as the double digits. So obviously, uh, more and more people are relying on their credit cards, as I've just kind of said redundantly. I apologize. Um, and a lot more Americans are going to get into credit card debt, unfortunately. And... This is with a quote, good economy. I don't know how the Federal Reserve, I do, I take that back. The, the job numbers for the last seven months have come in above stellar. And then the following month, the, federal, the government revises the payroll numbers down sharply. So they're saying one thing one month and then they're changing it the next month. But by the time the following month comes, nobody cares. Um, also, the July openings were supposed to, the July job openings were supposed to come in at 9.582 million. They came to 9.5 million, meaning they were expecting job openings of 9.5 million, and instead it was 8.8 .8 million. And there's more than 9 million people looking for jobs. So 
that's another sign that the economy does have some doom and gloom coming for, towards it. Um, again, the job numbers keep on getting revised lower and lower. And we have massive inflation. So again, take 23% average interest, take trillion dollars in credit card debt, and we're talking $230 billion in credit card interest every year. That's crazy. So pretty much one of two things happen from here. The economy crashes and the Federal Reserve does the right thing, which they have not. But if the economy crashes and they keep interest rates high, which they should, everything crashes, everything starts to come down. Yes, everybody will be laid off, et cetera, but it's the right way and it's, it, it is what needs to happen. We've been delaying this day of reckoning since 2005, probably 2003, if you really want to factor that in. Um, or they resume massive inflation, meaning quantitative easing, more stimulus packages, more free money for everybody, universal basic income. And, you know, now it's not going to cost 29 cents for a banana. It's going to cost $5 for a banana. It's not going to cost $3 for a gallon of gas. It's going to cost $30 for a gallon of gas. And that very well could happen depending on what the Federal Reserve does. I mean, clearly we're on an unsustainable path. Um, and the only thing that keeps on humming along is the stock market. Stock market goes down a little bit, up, down, 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 up, 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 way up. And that's all anybody pays attention to instead of middle class America, instead of paying attention to the food lines and everything else, which if you look at the reality, it's a sad story out there. So now is not the time to pile on more debt unless... If you feel like the Federal Reserve is going to resume quantitative easing, then add on a bunch of debt. And I'm saying this sarcastically, but if you add on a bunch of debt and you repay it at a later date, well, guess what? Uh, the dollars have been inflated. That initial loan that you took out has now deflated, and it's much cheaper to pay it back had there been no inflation. Um, please try to stay out of debt. <laughs> Long story short. Um, we have three bullet points left. Thank you for sticking with me. And if I missed anything, if you please leave any comments or suggestions, I know I'm kind of blasting through this. I'm trying to just give you the meat and potatoes of it. I could have made this a very long video. I could have gone through a bunch of analytics. I went overkill on my research and I just didn't want to bore you. And nobody wants to hear a bunch of numbers being read off to them. Unless you do, then please let me know in the comments. So what to do if you're in credit card debt? Well, my first question to you would not be, or my first statement would be not here's what to do. It would be how much, right? I would have a question for you. How much? Do you have 20000 in credit card debt? Do you have 50000 Do you have 100000 So my answer, if, you're, if you have credit card debt, is going to be dependent on how much do you have. And if you have a ton and there's no way of you ever paying it off, well, then I would suggest seeing possibly a bankruptcy attorney. Uh, this is not financial advice and don't hold me to any of it, but here's the basic rule of thumbs. Number one is you could either pay off the lowest balance first or pay off the highest interest rate credit card that you have. So if you pay off the lowest balance credit card first, at least you feel like you accomplished something, shut the credit card down, and you feel like, hey, good job, I can pat myself on the back. Or on the flip side, you pay off the highest yield and credit card first with the highest interest rate and you save a lot more money that way and same thing it'll take you longer but you get to pat yourself on the back um, don't take on any more debt look to cut your expenses right I can't tell you how many times I know people who complain about having credit card debt but they have the latest iPhone they have subscriptions to Hulu to Zulu to Disney to Amazon to Netflix to you know feed in the homeless which is great but not if you're poor yourself and a bunch of stuff that they don't need. So look to cut back your expenses. And the flip side to that is always look to earn more money, either work more hours, um, set up a side job, set up another job, get a second job or start your own business. You know, it's 2023, you can start so many other side businesses for free or for pennies on the dollar. I mean, there's books that have been written about the subject of start a business for under $100. Um, and if you have credit cards and you have credit card debt, not only to go add on more, but uh, spend the money and get a book and better yourself. 
So that's super basic uh, 101 economics. What do I think is going to happen? I think, unfortunately, as the history shows, you know, from 2000 to 2023, so you're talking a 23 year period, credit card debt has quadrupled and it's going to continue. Um, bigger, bigger numbers. Yes, people are making more and more, uh, you know, inf adjusted for inflation. They're not, but it, it's going to get worse and we're going to have a day of reckoning and, you know, the default rates of 10, 11%, I feel like are going to be way worse. You know, I feel like we're going to be in for some tough times. I feel like a lot of people are going to default on their credit cards and their other debts and not for nothing. Uh, if I was in a similar position, I might do the same thing. And when these credit card companies, Amazon, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, uh, Synchrony Bank, the list goes on and on, are, are licking their wounds, they deserve it. They're profiting now. They're profiting tremendously now. These are all multi-billion, billion dollar companies that make money from you just simply swiping your credit card, swiping your debit card. So they deserve to pay. Um, and yes, they're providing the service, but I mean, 3.25% of every sale for every sale you ring up, that's, I'm sorry, that's wrong. So overall, without getting into the, you know, auto loans, without getting into student loans, without getting into mortgages, without getting into everything that's wrong, this bubble's got to pop. And that brings us to uh, hopefully what you stayed for. And if you stayed for, or we're hoping something else, or we're hoping for something else, how to profit. So we have a few different ways of going about it. First and foremost is you could go long certain stocks or you could go short certain stocks. Um, case in point, if you feel like over the long term, American Express, Visa, MasterCard are going to make money, then by all means, buy their stock. They, I think they all pay dividends and collect the dividends. And, you know, if the economy goes to holy hell and the stock market crashes, I'm sure they're still going to probably pay their dividends. Um, you could look for smaller stocks. You could look for companies that, you know, have to do with uh, credit. How about case in point, artificial intelligence stock Upstart, which I bought that at $20, watched it go all the way up to 400, watched it go back down to, to 20, 30 bucks. And I've been buying it all along and I've been selling it all along. So um, take profit along the way. Don't be greedy. You know, pigs get slaughtered, hogs get slaughtered, whatever the saying is, but find good quality stocks that you can, grow with and keep for the long term. If you think what I think and feel like the economy is going to crash, then you could short the S&P 500. You could short the NASDAQ. You could short any of these other bank stocks I just mentioned uh, or credit card companies. And never mind the banks. That's another video for another day as well. Um, but how to profit would also be buying gold and buying silver, especially if you feel like the Federal Reserve is going to print more money, more massive inflation come in. Uh, go long silver. I also feel like go long gold, go long stocks, go long commodities. Um, you know, inflation, again, if you look back historically, the stock market goes up, 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 it goes down, up, 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 up. And eventually, you know, historically, the odds are in your favor and the government will keep on printing money. Um, I don't think they have the goal to do the right thing. If they did, interest rates would be at 12, 13, 14, 15 percent right now. And that would set everything back to where it needs to go to and prices would come down dramatically and that would result in saving. You know, people know that inflation is much higher than five or six percent and that's why they're spending their money uh, because if they were able to earn 10 percent, they would be saving their money because they would have a return. But inflation is eating away their money. It's eating away at the American uh, quality of life. Um, and you know, the debt just keeps on going up in all aspects. So the solution is to stay out of debt, stay lean, uh, save your money, maybe look into other foreign currencies, whatever the case may be, um, get educated. I can't emphasize it enough. Stay out of debt. And hopefully this was helpful to you and hope you have a great rest of the day. And please, if you found this helpful, like comment and subscribe.